Greetings and salutations. I am Poetic Heretic, and this is the story of a man who claims he was kidnapped by Bigfoot. By far the most well-known and talked about alleged Bigfoot kidnapping, as well as one of the strangest, concerns the Canadian prospector and lumberjack Albert Osman. In 1924, Osman went on vacation to the rugged wilderness near Toba Inlet, British Columbia, Canada. One of his purposes at the time was to try and find what he claimed to be a long-lost gold mine that he was convinced existed out there in the dense forests, which is already odd and intriguing enough as it is, but would be overshadowed by the bizarreness of what would purportedly happen to him during his trip. While on his journey into these remote badlands, Osman's Indian guide told him that the man who had allegedly originally found the lost gold mine was rumored to have been killed by a Sasquatch, which was, according to Osman, the first time he had ever heard of such creatures, despite having long been a hardened outdoorsman. The Indian explained about the large, hairy man-like beasts they called the Sasquatch and told of the large footprints they left behind. But Osman at the time did not believe a word of it, instead chalking it up to crazy old native legends. Not long after this, the two made camp and Osman headed out on his own with some supplies in a pack and armed with his rifle and a knife to investigate a pass through the mountains that he had seen, as well as to do some prospecting. After a few days of camping alone out in the wilderness, some rather odd things were noticed by Osman. One morning he found that some of the items in his camp had been moved around, although nothing had been taken, and Osman slept that night with his rifle within easy reach, thinking that perhaps a porcupine or other animal had come and picked through his camp. The following morning he found his backpack had been emptied out but was still oddly hanging from where he had left it, and that this time some things were missing, such as a half-pound pack of prunes and all of his pancake flour. The only thing that hadn't been touched was his bag of salt. An examination of the camp turned up no footprints, and the intrusion did not seem to be the work of animals since nothing had been torn apart or haphazardly ransacked or strewn about. For three nights in a row, the mysterious intruder visited the camp unseen, and all efforts by Osman to stake out the camp to find the trespasser in the act were to no avail. On the fourth night of these strange incidents, Osman went to bed fully clothed, with both his knife and rifle within easy reach, and this time he had intended to stay awake all night in order to catch the trespasser, but he eventually fell into a deep sleep. At some point, he claims he was awoken by something picking him up, sleeping bag and all, and he groggily thought it might be a snow slide, although there was no snow in the area at the time. He said that he then felt as if he had been put up on horseback, and that whatever was carrying him was walking. He couldn't see anything, as he was wrapped up in his sleeping bag, and he desperately grabbed for his rifle as he tried to figure out who or what was carrying him along. Unable to move, and with various equipment sticking into him uncomfortably, Osman could only wait there in the encroaching dark and see where he was being taken. Whatever had captured him seemed to be taking Osman uphill, as he could feel each step lifting upwards, and he began to notice that the thing was breathing heavily, as well as occasionally letting out coughing noises and strange chattering sounds. For three hours Osman was carried like this through the wilderness, when suddenly his sleeping bag was dumped onto the ground and he warily peeked outside. Although it was too dark at the time for him to clearly see what was out there, he could vaguely make out large, dark shapes and hear what sounded like several large creatures chattering unintelligibly amongst each other, and it seemed to be a family of the very hairy humanoids his old Indian guide had told him about. Osman called out to ask what the creatures wanted and was answered with more of the chattering sounds. He thought of escape, but his legs were too badly cramped and painful for him to even walk, let alone run away. As it got lighter outside, Osman claims that he could finally make out four humanoid creatures, unclothed and fully covered in shaggy hair. According to him, there were two big ones, which seemed to be the father, which was a massive specimen about eight feet tall, and the mother, as well as two smaller ones, which looked to be children, a boy and a girl, with smaller, meaning that they were only around six to seven feet tall. Osman would later say of their appearance, the young fellow might have been between 11 to 18 years old and about 7 feet tall and might weigh about 300 pounds. 
His chest would be 50 to 55 inches, his waist about 36 to 38 inches. He had wide jaws, narrow forehead that slanted upward round at the back about 4 or 5 inches higher than the forehead. The hair on their heads was about 6 inches long. The hair on the rest of their body was short and thick in places. The women's hair on the forehead had an upward turn like some women have. They call it bangs among women's hairdos. Nowadays, the old lady could have been anything between 40 to 70 years old. She was over 7 feet tall. She would be about 500 to 600 pounds. She had very wide hips and a goose-like walk. She was not built for beauty or speed. Some of those lovable braziers and uplifts would have been a great improvement on her looks and her figure. The man's eye teeth were longer than the rest of the teeth, but not long enough to be called tusks. The old man must have been near eight feet tall, big barrel chest and big hump on his back, powerful shoulders. His biceps on his upper arm were enormous and tapered down to his elbows. His forearms were longer than common people have, but well proportioned. His hands were wide, the palm was long and broad, and hollow like a scoop. His fingers were short in proportion to the rest of his hand. His fingernails were like chisels. The only place they had no hair was inside their hands and the soles of their feet and upper part of the nose and eyelids. I never did see their ears. They were covered with hair hanging over them. The creatures did not seem threatening or aggressive towards Osman at all, and indeed the young ones seemed a little frightened of him, but neither did they seem ready to let him leave. According to Osman, for the next six days the family of Sasquatch forcefully kept him there, with the large male constantly nearby and sitting at the only obvious escape route. During this time, Osman claimed that the family of creatures slept within a shelter lined and covered with bark and dry moss and that gradually the curious creatures would come closer to observe him, including the younger ones. The family of Sasquatch also offered Osman food in the form of nuts and a type of sweet grass, which the young boy Sasquatch would deftly climb up the mountain to get. In return, Osman would let it play with his snuff box, which it would practice opening and closing, as well as tasting the snuff inside. When the young male seemed to demand one for his sister, Osman gave her a snuff box as well. For the most part, the adults were described as mostly resting all day while the children climbed and played. Osman claimed that on several occasions he had picked up his rifle and tried to walk out of there, but that the large male had stood in front of him, holding his hands out and vocalizing irritably. Although Osman had his rifle, he chose not to fire upon the creatures, as they seemed remarkably human, showed no inclination towards harming him, and he was not sure if his rifle would even hurt the massive beast, instead only serving to anger it. Considering that the younger ones seemed to like playing with the snuff boxes so much and looking at the remaining snuff within, and that the father had also shown interest in them, Osman began to concoct a plan to incapacitate or even kill the large adult male by feeding him a full box of snuff, after which he felt confident that he would be able to escape with little resistance. One day, Osman opened a new box of snuff and took a dose and at the same time the adult male had reportedly suddenly snatched it away and emptied the entire contents into his mouth, even going so far as to thoroughly lick out any remnants. As predicted, the male Sasquatch fell violently ill and Osman made a run for it, reportedly firing his rifle over the mother's head as she pursued him and scaring her off. After some time of slogging through the wilderness, Ever wary of being followed by the family of Sasquatch, Osman was finally rescued by some loggers and brought back to civilization. Osman would keep his story quiet for decades, afraid of ridicule, until increasing reports of Bigfoot sightings in the 1950s persuaded him to finally come forth with his sensational tale in 1957. Albert Osman's amazing story had been picked apart and debated ever since, with some calling him a liar and others pointing to it as genuine evidence of Bigfoot, as well as everything in between, but we may never know the truth. Whether Osman's account is true or the product of an active imagination, it is certainly one of the stranger and more detailed reports of Bigfoot kidnappings. That concludes this mysterious story. Don't forget to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.